Hi, my name's Will Billingsley. At the time we worked on this paper, I was with NICTA, which is an Australian computer science research centre. I'm now on a contract role with the University of Queensland, where Jim Steele, my co-author, is a lecturer, and I've just become part of the team at the University of New England in Australia as part of their strategy to redesign their computer science degree. So while they weren't part of this paper, going forward they'll be part of this project too, I expect. The headline for this talk is, in 2013, we put 140 students on a single project, and it worked. Now we're taking our course out to the world, and we want you to help. First, I should explain the background of the on-campus course. In most degrees, at some point, students take a course where they work on a collaborative project, perhaps four students working on a common code base. And a lot of project courses scale that up to larger classes by having each small group work on their own small project. Well, in 2011, we weren't satisfied by that. We figured that it's when someone you don't chat to every day starts modifying your code that you discover the value of version control, continuous integration, test-driven development, and good API design. So instead, we put all the teams on a common code base. Now they were developing features for a common product. And we call it super collaboration because you've got students in collaborative teams, but those collaborative teams in turn have to collaborate with each other. We've run three iterations of the class so far, and in our most recent cohort we had 140 students, which was a mix of software engineering, design and information system students. And last year they built a network games arcade, a bit like Steam. It had multiplayer APIs, achievements, a store, an event recording and replay system for games, and of course several games using those APIs, ranging from arcade shooters like this one, to very innovative two-player puzzle games, to more traditional 2D platform games. All told, the class made 4,883 commits and wrote 67,900 lines of code over the semester. And in class, we taught the students distributed version control, continuous integration, test-driven development, API design, refactoring, ticket management. Essentially, the course covers the inherently collaborative nature of programming, how to create programs that are bigger than one person can write. Which brings me to what I'd like to talk about today. Now, we'd like to take the course out to the world as a super collaborative MOOC. What's the advantage of doing this? Well, in our on-campus class, we have 140 students, a mix of software engineering, design and information system students. So we think it's a bit more diverse in terms of skills and experience than many courses, but it's still nowhere near as diverse in terms of the experience level of the students as a MOOC cohort. Often, a large portion of a MOOC class already has a degree. In our super collaborative project-led course, we think that greater variation in experience could give students a greater chance to learn from each other within the teams. For instance, we may attract students who are already pretty good at programming, but would like to try their hand at mentoring or leading a team. But there are some big questions whether a super collaborative course could work as a MOOC. How do you make the projects manageable for very large numbers of students? Harvard's CS50X in 2012 had 150,000 students sign up. That's a little under twice the capacity of the football stadium in the picture. Could a super collaborative project-led course be feasible if that many stu students come along? And attrition rates in MOOCs are very high too. For, CS59, uh, for CS50X, 99.1% of students did not complete the course. In a course where it's just individual work, that might not matter the students who are left still get full value from the course. But in a collaborative team, the students dropping out affects the other students in the team. And in a super collaborative course, the teams that become unviable affects the other teams. The projects need to be manageable at the start and still viable at the end. We used CS50X's numbers as a kind of worst case scenario as it had the largest numbers and the largest attrition that we could find. But if we dive into the data that they published about their course, of the 150,000 who signed up, only 100,000 watched a video or engaged at all, and only around 10,000 submitted any assessment. So if we ignore the spectators who might never join a project in the first place, the attrition looks like this. 
And also, for our super collaborative course on campus, the project doesn't start in week one. At the start of the course, we give the class a project structure and a small amount of code, and we tell them what the mission is. We're building STEAM here uh, for last year. But before they decide what features they're going to build, they need to get the code, which means they have to learn about version control. And they need to be able to build and run the code, which means they have to learn about build systems. And they need to understand the code, which means they need to learn how to explore code using tests and, tests and the debugger. And they need to learn how to contribute changes back to the code, which means they need to learn about continuous integration. So there's three weeks of individual work that happens before the teams form and begin to propose features. So in terms of the viability of the teams, the attrition rate for teams during the project, if we look at CS50X's data and try to get the maximum attrition from week three onwards, it's 73.6%. That's still a lot, but is not nearly as bad as 99.1%. Perhaps if we support moving students between teams and help the active students to group together, that might be survivable. We ran a small unscientific simulation to see what the attrition might look like. We started with 10 students per team and 50 teams per code base. So a bit larger than on campus where we had four or five students per team and 30 teams on the project. The simulation repeatedly chose a random team to remove a student from, randomly choosing the team rather than the student because otherwise teams losing students would be less likely to lose more students, which would seem a bit odd. If the project starts at the beginning of the course with 150,000 students needing catering for and 99% attrition, there would be very bad news indeed. Far too many teams to cope with at the start and by the end most, te most projects having no teams left. But starting at week three, using CS50X's numbers, we'd need 11 projects at the start, and by the end in our simulation, all those projects had at least 14 teams still active at the end of the project. So this gave us some encouragement. Even with very high student numbers and very high attrition numbers, higher than we'd perhaps expect now there's more competing MOOCs, it still looks feasible. This is a 10 minute talk, so I won't cover everything in the paper, but I wanted to include a call to action. We want you to help. If we're going to teach the inherently collaborative nature of programming, then surely we should do it collaboratively. So I'm hoping we can develop the course a little more like an open source project, put things up before they're ready and encourage others, yourselves, to contribute to the content, the exercises, everything. Make courses open for contribution rather than just open for learners. And I think we could do quite a lot more in courses that way. For instance, on campus the course runs in Java. But online, a collaborative MOOC could support projects in many different languages, but that would require teaching materials to support the course in those languages. The big vision I'm trying to work towards with this is for it to become a way that the computing community, universities, companies and the open source community can teach students to program together. I'm starting to put up the course as an open source project at www.supercollaborative.org and I'd encourage you, if you're willing, to be involved. And to end on a catchy line, I thought I'd ask, are you super collaborative? Because with your help, we are.